Hey guys, and welcome to another Blender tutorial. This is part of the Quick Tip series on my channel. And today we're going to talk about world settings and just some basic rendering settings which may make your preview renders better and faster without having to add a bunch of obnoxious lights to the scene. So, what we're going to start doing here is we're going to go in and we're going to go to the World tab over here in the Properties panel. And the World tab has a bunch of things here and we're going to talk about these today. So the most important one that I'm going to talk about today is Ambient Occlusion. This is really important because this can help you make instant preview renders very beautifully. So if I go ahead and check this and we're just going to leave everything as it is and we're going to render. Now rendering out you see your cube is a bit wider than normal and you're probably asking why is that? Well that's because um, let me explain this phenomenon, or not phenomenon, but I guess natural fact of nature. Ambient occlusion is basically like what happens when the sky is out and you know it's you know blue sky out and basically light's coming from everywhere because we all know that light doesn't just come from the sun, it comes from many other sources. It comes from a global ambience as it was. And that's what this is. This is global ambience. And so we have an add here and we have multiply. We're not going to worry about that right now. And so then if we go over here and we look at this um, lamp, we're actually going to change this over to a sun lamp and uh, we're going to check sky over here. Sky basically makes an actual realistic sun sky and I'm going to just change this over to classic because that's what I think looks the best and I'm not going to worry about atmosphere for right now. I'm going to change the ray sampling just to 5 just so it looks a little more realistic and I'm going to change this, keep this ray trace to 5 and I'm going to check environment lighting. And then I'm going to go over here, and in white, I'm actually going to change to sky texture. Because while you can't see it here, the sky texture is now the actual sky background it's inheriting from the sun that we checked earlier over here a few minutes ago. So now, if I have this here, and I'm going to change these factors just a little bit, because it's, otherwise it's going to be really bright. And I'm going to change the sun over here to a little bit of a yellow. I'm going to go back over here, and if you look over here, I'm going to change this to multiply. I'm going to add a plane here just for... Uh, demonstration purposes and I'm going to go ahead and render. And now you'll see something else too. The shadow is not exactly just plain black or plain gray or anything. It's blue. And you're probably thinking, oh, you changed something in the light settings. Well, kind of. I've changed the ambient light here to be blue. And when ambient light comes into darker places, it adds a little bit of light here and so it makes it blue, like the sky is here. And it's very, very helpful for making realistic renders because this is actually a realistic thing. If you've ever gone out around your house at about five and you see a shadow cast by a tree onto say concrete or something that's fairly white you'll notice that the shadow may be pretty blue if the sky is clear that's be that's basically what ambient occlusion is along with environment lighting environment lighting is more of that but ambient occlusion also adds to that factor and then of course you have these two gather functions and gather is ray trace and approximate approximate is basically like if you know about it buffer shadows and if we go to see you'll see it's really bad it doesn't look very realistic ray tracing is the more realistic method although approximate can look very good and is the standard for a good amount of game engines although now we're moving away from that because we have powerful computers and very powerful consoles so i'm going to go back over here and look at indirect lighting and indirect lighting is a feature that only works with the approximate so that's something to note I'm going to go ahead and turn off these environment lighting and ambient occlusion, and I'm going to go ahead and also delete this sun. Now, if you've ever used Blender 2.49, you know that when you add objects to emit something, you had to do all this thing called radiosity baking, and it was a very big pain, and it was just a bit of a difficult thing to do. But now, it's very quite sim it's really simple with the new Blenders, and this came out ever since 2.5 is basically the new age, I guess, of radiosity baking with Blender. And basically it doesn't even involve any baking. It's just basically directly from this indirect lighting. And indirect lighting is when you take an object, if you're familiar with cycles, it's sort of like emissions, and it make it emit light. So I'm going to make this, uh, change this emit value in the materials panel to 0.5, and I've just changed the color here just for, you know, just to have a little bit of fun with this and not make it a total white. That would just be just ugly and wouldn't look very well good, but this red I think might look a little bit better. And I've checked indirect lighting, and I'm going to change these bounces up to about 4, because I think that's good, and I'm also going to change the sampling to about 2 passes. So now if I go here, um, this scene is normally completely dark, because I've turned off ambient occlusion and environment lighting, and I've gotten rid of all the spotlights, sunlights, point lights, all everything out of the scene. So now technically it should be just dark, and with ray trace, it is completely dark, except for the fact that this cube is emitting, and emit values work a little weird in ray trace. But with the approximate and indirect lighting on, if we go ahead and render here, you'll see that this does in fact emit light. And that's the really cool thing about approximate that Ray Trace does not yet have in Blender internal, is that things can emit light. And if we go over here, I can duplicate this cube and uh, scale it down a little bit, move it over, and I'm going to change this cube to be a different material of a slightly more blue. And so now if we render this out, you'll also notice that, wow, yep, there are two 
lights go right in here, and this is a really fantastic feature of the of the approximate rendering because it just allows you to make this thing so much easier than having to add lots of point lights when you want an object to emit light. Um, we're going to go over here to the next setting, which would be mist, and I'm going to change back over to ray trace and get rid of all these uh, other things because we don't really need any of this. So I'm going to have this here, and I'm going to uh, move this camera down a little bit because uh, the next demonstration may need a little bit of a farther, I guess, camera bit. Mist, I'm actually... Mm, on second thought, I will not go through Mist in this tutorial. I think it's just a little bit too much of a time-consuming thing. In one tutorial, I think it deserves its own tutorial as it has quite a bit of features. But I will go into Stars, and Stars is a really cool thing because if you've ever wanted to make stars in Blender, well, it's very easy to do that now. And I'm just going to move away from our scene because we don't really need our scene at the moment. Stars is great, and if you see right here, it's just generated them, although you can't see it here. If you go into the camera view, you can see that it has in fact generated these stars. It doesn't actually generate realistic constellations or anything, it doesn't generate by the time of day you're at, but it does generate random stars. And of course, you can increase the size here as you see in the pane over here. If I go to here, I'm going to change the sky color to black just to make this look a little bit more spacey, and I'm going to change the separation, of course, to, oh, wow, yeah, quite a bit more down, and I'm going to change the size down here to pretty small. And then uh, I'm going to add a little bit of color, because uh, believe it or not, if you ever looked up in the sky, stars do actually have quite a bit of colors. Minimum uh, distance away from the camera, also, wow, I might change that down a little bit. Um, yeah, I'll just put it all the way down, and so now I'm going to just render this out. And you notice all these little stars here that are all different sizes, and this is basically a really easy way to make realistic stars with Blender. So, uh, and I mean, they are fairly realistic too. Uh, it's better to use a texture from Google or something, but uh, this works on the fly and it does look pretty good itself. And so now you can see, wow, that's too much color. Um, it uses a basic cloud value system too, which is a texture that you can use make basically make random colors. And uh, so yeah, that's about it for stars and uh, custom properties, which is a thing that I won't really get into in this tutorial. All right, well, that's about it for this tutorial. Uh, thanks, leave a rating and a comment, and uh, possibly subscribe. Uh, bye.